In this tutorial, we'll be building TikTok's UI using Flutter. When it comes to implementing a UI, similarly to coding, it's easier when it's broken down into smaller pieces. Firstly, we'll divide it up into a column with three different widgets. Top section, middle section and a bottom section. We can then additionally split the middle section into two more parts. We have a right side toolbar and a left video description section. Now that we have a plan on what we're going to be developing, let's start with the code. If you would like to follow along, head over to github.com slash foldstacks and go into the Flutter Tutorials repo. Clone this repo and then go into the TikTok UI folder. If you want to start from the beginning, you can drop phase 1 into your Visual Studio code and start coding with me. Make sure you get all your packages for Flutter and set your debug configuration so that you can start debugging. You can open up the home.dart file and we'll start in there. We'll change the container to a column. The first child in the column will be a container with a fixed height of 100 and a yellow background. The next widget we add in is our bottom section. It's also fixed height of 80 with a blue background. We add this in first because I want to show you what happens when you add an expandable widget in between those two items. Then we add in our expanded widget with a row as its child. In this row we have a container with a fixed width of 100 and a red background. We want the video description to take up the rest of the space in this row. We'll use an expanded widget, we'll give it a container which has a green background. With this little bit of code, we've already come to the second step of our breakdown process. Before we continue, let's refactor some of the code to make it a bit cleaner and easier to read. For each of the sections, we'll create a property widget which will return our UI for that section. Because we're building our UI with code, it can get very messy very quickly. So we always want to keep it neat. Next up, we'll move the entire middle section into its own widget as well. And the same for the bottom section. Since the middle section is also split up into separate sections, it would be easier if we split that into its own sections as well. We'll create two properties at the top for video description and one for the actions toolbar. And we'll move the code from our middle section into those properties. Now that our overall layout is complete, we can start adding in our smaller widgets. We'll start with our video description. This can be seen as three items stacked on top of each other with a spacing in between. We'll use containers of a fixed height of 10, we'll add that into a column, and then we'll put that into this widget. So as you can see, all of our widgets are at the top of our column. We want this to be at the bottom. The first thing we have to do is tell the row that we want all its elements to be placed at the end of its cross axis. And then secondly, we have to make sure that our column doesn't take up all the space in the row vertically. So we'll set the main axis alignment of our column to minimum. Next up is our actions toolbar. Instead of using the duplicate code like we did above for the video description, we're going to instead use dots built in generate functionality to produce five widgets for us. We'll give our container a child column and its children will be determined by our list.generate function. We'll generate five items and for each item we'll return a container with a fixed height and a fixed width of 60. We will also give these containers a blue background. So as you see all our widgets are at the top but we want it to be at the bottom. There's an easy fix for this. We just set our main axis size to minimum. This will wrap our container and because the row has a cross axis alignment property of end, it will push the widget to the bottom of the screen. Next up is our bottom section. This can be seen as a row with five children in it. So we'll change the bottom section to be a row and we'll give a children that's generated through our list.generate functionality. We'll generate five children with each of them returning a container with a fixed height and width of 40 and a purple background. With our code, all the widgets in the row will be tightly packed next to each other. We want this to be spaced out evenly, so we'll set our main axis alignment to space evenly. Before we move on to building the actual UI, let's organize our code a little bit better. We'll create a widgets folder under lib and we'll place all of our widgets in there. 
The widgets can be determined by the three properties that's in the code. We'll have an actions toolbar dot dot, we'll add a video description dot dot, and we'll also add a bottom toolbar dot dot. The code for these files can be copied directly from the properties. You'll create a stateless widget and you'll return what's in the properties from the build function. Next up, we want to import all three files into our home file. So after importing our files, we can then remove our properties. We'll remove the video section property, the action toolbar property, and the bottom section property. Now we can replace our previous properties with our new widgets. And at this point, the UI layout is complete. We'll start off by, by adding the UI for the video description first. We'll add three widgets to our main column. We'll add a text with a font weight bold. We'll add a normal text. Then we'll add a row where the first child of that row is a music icon note. And our second child is the artist information. Looking at these widgets, you can see that it's a little bit tight here and it doesn't match our design. We want the column to space out these widgets evenly. The way we do that is by giving it a fixed height. So we'll wrap our column in a container, give it a height of 70, and then we'll tell it to space evenly. The next part is the fact that it's so tight against the left side of the view. We'll add some padding into our column with dimensions of 20, and that should fix it up. Next up is our actions toolbar. These five actions can be split into three separate actions. We have a social action, a follow action, and a music action. We'll start with a social action. This will be a widget with an icon at the top and a title at the bottom. For this we can use a column. We'll give all of our actions a fixed size so that it fits into the container that we've laid out. So we'll create a function called get social action. It'll take in a title and we'll take in icon data. We'll return a container of width and height 60 and inside of that container we'll give it a child of column, the first child being an icon and the second child being text with some padding around it. We can then replace our generate function above with three get social actions and we can pass in the information that we want. For this you'll need the TikTok icons file which you can import from the root folder and it's called TikTok icons icons dot dot. For the first social action, we'll pass in the heart with a, with a text 3.2 million. For the second one, we'll pass in our chat bubble with a title 16.4K. And for the last one, we'll pass in share with a title share. So as you can see by this screenshot, our share icon is actually a bit bigger than the rest. The way we'll fix this is by passing in a Boolean value into our get social action called is share. Based on this boolean value, we'll be returning different dimensions for some of the elements. For the icon size, we'll return 25 instead of 35. For our top padding in our text, we'll return 5 instead of 2. And for our title font size, we'll return 10 instead of 12. So now we can head up to our get social action for share and we can pass in share equals true at the end of this. You should see your share sh shrink down. You should see your share shrink down. You should see, you should see your share shrink down. <laughs> and, and now it will visually appear to be the same size as the rest of the social actions. You can adjust this to your liking if you think it's too small or too big, but the functionality is there and you can adjust it easily. Before we continue with the rest of the code, let's just do some overall theme adjustments. I want to change all the text to white, I want to change the background to black and I want to remove the red border on the actions toolbar. So we'll start with our text. For our text theme we'll go to our main file and we'll give the material app some theme data. We'll update our text theme property to take in our current text theme with an addition of applying some white to our body color and our display color. Next we'll head over to our home file and change our scaffolds background color to black. We then have to go change the music note icon to white. And lastly, 
we'll remove our red background from our actions toolbar container. With these changes we can see that we're getting pretty close to our final result. Next up, let's move on to our follow action. The follow action can be broken down into two separate parts. We have our container with our image inside, which is rounded, and we also have another rounded container with an add icon inside it. In Flutter, when we want to overlay widgets, we use a stack widget. The way we'll add our widgets to the stack is in the following order. The first child is our rounded image with a border, and the second child is our rounded container with the add icon. Let's create a get follow action function that returns a container with the fixed width and height of 60 and that has one child stack widget. Within this widget we'll return two non-existing widget functions. We'll return get profile picture and get plus icon. We'll fill this in a bit later, let's just clean up the code first. Let's move all the constants into their own variables so that it's easy to reference and easy to share. We'll move all the constants to the top and we will replace them in code using those constants. The way you position widgets in a stack layout is by using a positioned widget. So for our get profile picture function, we'll return a positioned widget with a container of a fixed width and height. We'll give it a box decoration of border radius equal to the, the width divided by 2 and a background color of white. We then add our child which is our cached network image. This library can be imported at the top using the cached network image dot dot file. For the image we'll supply it with a URL to my public gravatar. We'll give it a placeholder that is a circular progress indicator and we'll give it an error widget that will return the error icon when something went wrong. At this point we can go ahead and return our get follow action in our main build function. You'll see that we get an error because one of our children is null. This is happening because our get plus icon function is still not returning anything. We'll go to the get plus icon and return an empty container for now. Now you should see the beginnings of how our get follow action widget will look. We can see that it's just a rounded image which is shift to the left with no border around it. Instead of using an actual border we'll just pad the image a little bit on the sides because our container background is white. The next thing we have to do for our profile picture is to place it in the center of our main, main container. The way we do that is by using this simple formula. To get the, the left position that will place our container in the center of a larger container, we'll use the width of the parent divided by 2 and we'll subtract the child's width divided by 2. That'll give us a left position that'll place the center of our child in alignment with the center of our parent. Let's move on to the get plus icon. We'll change our container to a positioned function. We'll give it a bottom of 0 and we'll return a child with a fixed width with a fixed width and height of 20. We'll add some decoration and give it a border radius of 15 so it's completely rounded and a background color as the one you see there which is a reddish pink. Then we'll add our child which is an icon using our add icon. We'll give it a color of white and a size of 20. Now the last thing we have to do is move our plus icon to the center of our container. We'll use the exact same formula as the one we used above. The parent's width divided by 2 and we'll subtract the child's width divided by 2 from that value. Now we'll do some adjustments to our margins so that it's spaced out more evenly. Next up is our music player action. We'll create a function called get music player action. It will return a container with a fixed width and height, the same as the others, and we'll use our action widget size as our width and height. We'll also give it a margin of top 10, and we'll add it into our main build action so that we can see it while we're developing. This widget is pretty simple. It's a container that's wrapped in a column, which will help us with the sizing. This column will have one child, which is a container. We'll give it the same size profile picture image and we'll give it a decoration of border radius which is half the profile image size so that it's round. We'll give it a gradient background 
which starts at the bottom left and ends at the top right and we'll give it four different colors we'll start at light gray then we'll go to a very dark gray in the middle and then we'll go to a light gray at the end the image functionality will be the same as the ones we used above with that action we are done with our actions toolbar next up we'll just remove our yellow toolbar at the top and replace it with the actual text we'll add a child to our container for the top section which will be a row and then we'll add our text following we'll give it a space of width 15 and then we'll add more text that has a larger font size and that is bold we will then tell the main exercise to wrap all this content so that it's placed in the center of our container and lastly we'll tell the cross axis alignment of our row to place all the items within it at the bottom using cross axis alignment.end and next up is our bottom actions toolbar we can replace our generate function with an empty array we can import our tiktok icons file and we'll create a constant at the top called navigation icon size and give it a size of 20. at this point we can add in four separate icons into our rose children we'll add the home first then search then messages and then our profile the last thing we have to do is to develop our custom create icon this icon can be broken down into four different UI pieces. We have a stack layout which will be the overall UI and it will have three separate colored containers inside of it. We'll have a blue container on the left, we'll have a pinkish red container on the right and we'll have our main white container in the center. And within this white container we'll also have a black icon which will supply the plus icon too. So we'll start by creating our custom create icon property. This will return a container with a width of 45 and a height of 27. The child of this container will be a stack. We want the width of our containers to be less than the overall width so that it sticks out on either side of our white container. The first container we'll add is the reddish pink one which will give a margin of 10 on the left the second one will be our blue one which will give a margin of 10 on the right and the last one will place in a center widget which will have the white background and no margins. We will then set our child icon of our center container. So as you can see the container height shrunk to match the height of the add icon. To fix this we can set the height of the container to double dot infinity. This is the value that you want to use if you want to match your parents' dimensions. If this video brought you any value, please like and subscribe. I have some great tutorials planned for the future and I'm sure that you would enjoy that too.